you know, for time to, I thought I wasn't going to do another raw review after what I just watched on paper. From all the things you can't mess up in professional wrestling, it's literally the restriction of matches with very little restriction and a lot of entertainment. I complained about the lack of creativity. I think I missed his, his, uh, Dolph Ziggler and Kevin Owens match in there because it ended so shortly. But for fuck's sake, for all the times I've reviewed wrestling, I've never seen the most lazy, pretentious, and desperate race for WWE to think, oh, we need to sell a lesson to sell the pay-per-view. Other than him and his storyline, but it's always been the last several years with him holding the biggest belt in the company and not making one superstar big. And now I have to watch Raw again with Paul Heyman and his fat chuckling ass always sucking Philly's dick. Even though he sucked it dry and caused multiple wrestlers to lose their fucking jobs and owe so many wrestlers fucking money before WWE bought it out. And then they just authoritize anything. Does the Four weeks until SummerSlam. Early August. August 11th. And all they can do for this entire segment is is just like discredit most of the effort from most of the wrestlers. Lesnar had the is Lesnar with the money in the bank briefcase was the most OP shit. They knew they had to make him win at any big pay-per-view. So they could have done it at SummerSlam or the Royal Rumble. Either which they were going to do it to begin with. And then they just authoritized a pay-per-view match. They even booked the show because of... Hink, wink, wink. Paul Heyman is part of the creative committee with Raw. While Eric Bischoff's on SmackDown. Fuck off with that shit. WWE's already off the gutter, out the gutter. And you guess what? The only person that's got to pull the, to pull the strings when it comes to the big championship is going to be Vince McMahon, hook, line, and sinker. No one cares. They, so instead of, like, a tournament involving most of the top guys, like Drew McIntyre, Braun Strowman, Samoa Joe, anybody else, just anything else to make the show at least watchable or for a reason for these guys to compete, we're just going to have 50-50 booking, bloody bloody blah and we have one number one contenders match for no fucking reason. Even though fans want to see wrestling with a reason. They, one is with a W, the other one's without a W. Fuck it. It's, they issued not even a raw 10-man battle royal. A cross-brand 10-man battle royal. Because the show's already strudel enough with so many storylines. Um, I mean, not storylines. They, they don't do that dumb shit anymore. Because I'm not making a coherent, a coherent writing and interesting creative set pieces to let these wrestlers have an interesting, memorable memorable feud with one another just turns into trash. They make this wild card excuse to just let these guys frequently come to Raw and SmackDown every fucking week to make this wild card crap completely worthless. And they just issued a 10-man battle royale off the bat. And just chose their own chosen wrestlers. They did. That's what they fucking did. So next up was going to be Bray Wyatt coming out of nowhere and attacking Finn Balor after Finn Balor uh, lost to Samoa Joe. And then an ovation of Sue. First they thought this would be a redemption because Finn Balor said this is redemption after I lost to Shinsuke Nakamura. Even though I lost to him twice. One on SmackDown and one on Extreme Rules. Guess what? He gets no redemption. He gets attacked off returning Bray Wyatt. Bray Wyatt had the stupidest design, that Firefly Funhouse bullshit that took up several months of our time, came up to him with another intimidating, crazy gimmick that might not get him a world heavyweight, or, I'm, I'm sorry, universal championship opportunity, or at least a, re a relevant world championship opportunity, or reign for the rest of his career. I have low expectations for the reinvention or the return of Bray Wyatt. Whatever you ensue. Next up was Ricochet and the Usos against Robert Roode. Now, I don't know why they gave him the name because he looks like Rick Roode with a bigger build. Against the Revivals, and not just in a six-man tag, 
a two out of three fall six man tag, so they traded a few blows, had a few transitional moves, then hit their stupid finishers. Ricochet ended it with the six thirty. There was not that much storytelling or something. All you can get was fucking Rick Rude wrestled Ricochet a few times, and the revival or sort of feuding with uh, goddamn the Usos and Usi Hot existed. Bro. From all the things I've seen, it was meh. I, I, I didn't care. At all. All it came was like, they were saying Ricochet was such a sore, a sore a good winner. I'm mean, a good loser and faced it like a man with the U.S. title just losing in his first title defense. Second title defense, my fault. And just flips it shouldn't attack AJ Styles out of nowhere in a six-man tag. Again, there's two six-man tags, but that one's two out of three falls. After we had two two out of three falls matches on SmackDown and a six-man elimination tag match. What the fuck was the point here? Then, uh... Viking Raiders, they kept promoing them up with these stupid-ass squash matches that never get anybody over. Ask Nia Jax. They just had the simple squash match. And that was it. Transition to another promo that was going from earlier tonight when uh, Cedric Alexander was the surprise tag team partner when we thought it was going to be the janitor to help out with the chosen tag team partner for, uh, Ro for, uh, Roman Reigns, the last the go home show for Extreme Rules. It was Cedric Alexander, yay! And they just had a match. It was alright. A few transitional moves. We've seen Cedric Alexander do the same Philippi Dippy bullshit. Uh, flip into, uh, Inziguri. Top Gun Holo, a few decent moves off, uh, I like these cross middleweight, uh, cross weight matches, it really just exchanges the type of field that these guys are in, and it just came up with a surprise roll of victory, Cedric Alexander beats, uh, Drew McIntyre, this was a decent story, a bit of deception off last week, and trying to get a win, but Drew McIntyre failed, so that was meh, that was meh. They're going to do maybe 50-50 booking. Then they had Zack Ryder against Mike Kanellis and had a Barry pickups that were supposed to be popular and former Ring of Honor Tag Team Champions, uh, Mike Kanellis. Mike Bennett. But fuck it, Mike Kanellis, that was on 205 Live for the last several months, was on SmackDown Feud with Sami Zayn. That's all I remember of Kanellis. Then he comes around. With Maria acting like a scun and said she would she would be better off beating Zack Ryder than Mike does. And then he gets into the ring immediately and gets a rough rider. Then what's the point of this? It's like, are we going to have a redemption story? They're going to do this several weeks and he's not even going to have a kickoff match on pay-per-view. That's how pathetic it is. And then insult him some more. So what's the point of them being together? When did this even have this uh, bad falling out? Of Maria acting like a crazy bitch. I haven't seen this happen since like Royal Rumble. The female Royal Rumble. So that's maybe why. Because she had this interaction with Alicia Fox. And now she's just going over acting like a crazy bitch. And just disrespecting Mike and Alice when he did nothing wrong. Then 24-7 championship. Drake Maverick was about to fuck his wife. And then... A bit of deception. The referee was a caterer. And then our troop came out of nowhere and rolled him up for the pinfall. Our troop was like, isn't it like a 10-time 24-7 championship? There's very little variety or that much. There was supposed to be a new belt. A new belt. That was supposed to rip off the Hardcore Championship. Fuck you, WWE. You should have brought that back. 
Things that have the more memorable design, plus people remember it. You made the 24-7 championship, trying to make this comeback story with Drake Maverick, and you take it like there's not any more jobbers trying to get that belt. You didn't even have it on pay-per-view. That that was like one of my biggest things. You have the most freelancing belt in the entire WWE, and you did nothing with it. What a ripoff. What the fuck was watching a pay-per-view with like 200 guys you have on salary on both brands? Could barely even have time to at least, like, win the 24-7 championship. That should be a free-for-all for whoever wants it. Then we had the club face-off against the Lucha House Party. So it seems like Styles hit the calf crusher around Kalisto. There was a few big Haas moves off of Luke Gallows and Carl Anderson, seeing how superior they are face on, facing against guys that are, like, 205 live material. Ricochet came out of nowhere and attacked him. That was pretty much it. That's how much we really care about AJ Styles and Carl Anderson and Luke Gallows, even though they won more ma lost more matches and somehow have a tag team championship reign around their belt with one raw tag team title win they had against maybe the Revival or something that nobody cared about. There's barely any moves that I recall that I want to call, uh, recall that were memorable in this entire match. And then we had Natalia. We had Natalia, Naomi, Carmella, and Alexa Bliss in a fatal four-way elimination match for uh, number one contendership for Becky Lynch's Raw Women's Championship. Now, they keep this straight. Becky Lynch is still on SmackDown. And they give her the belt. Which won a Royal Rumble. I can understand that. Why the fuck do most of these guys still have wild card rulings? That made no sense. And yet you have Naomi and Natalia that barely showed up on TV for most of their run. They haven't been on pay per view, and yet they earn a shot out of nowhere to just be in this number one contenders match. And it and I heard a complaint from numerous YouTubers and from online. Thing that Alexa Bliss complained about the fans being disrespectful because there's barely much that interesting into the match except for the Naomi's like steel stare into a blockbuster. That was a really cool move. Other than that, Nikki Cross grabbed the mic and just uh, tried to hype up the crowd so she's like super mega heel now. Just an instant cheerleader for Alexa Bliss. Carmella can't do a super kick still, or can barely, barely get into the match. There was like second and a half into the match, Alexa Bliss attempted a headlock when there was like three women left or two women left. Why would you attempt a headlock? You don't do slow down set pieces in a fiddle four way elimination match. Grab a weapon, do some cheating, knock out a ref, something. This is for the only women's championship, and, and none of these women have anything else to do. They have the tag team championships. Feud with most women. Make a storyline. It's always the belt that I see on the line, man. Natalia won off that discus forearm that's somehow the most threatening move when there's so many mundane moves that are used that can barely get three counts. Naomi's ass is used as a finisher, and yet a discus lariat takes out a woman. You can see why this match sucked. There was barely even that much energy coming from the crowd. There was only one move that got me hype, and that was maybe that a blockbuster from the steel stairs that Naomi did. And other than that, nothing else was feeling of the crowd. Then Alexa Bliss just said, online, like a fucking pussy, in public, that you are being disrespectful for the match. Not disrespectful to me because I lost, or you weren't cheering for me. I thought it would be a double-edged sword thanks, like, heels, like, when any heels could use this to try to popularize themselves. Not every wrestler is using social media to a disadvantage. Thanks, it gets into more rumor territory, gets them more into their personal business, and it shows how much of a whiny pussy you are online. Alexa, you know this is why I lose a bit of respect for you, and so does more of the wrestling fans around the planet do. Shows how unresilient you are to criticism, and to show how sensitive you are as not only being a wrestler, as being an adult. 
That's sad. You're sad. Nobody didn't. Nobody even cared about your two out of your two against one handicap match for the women's championship. You think that's replayability? And then we have Dolph Ziggler coming around, introduce introducing Miss TV. Yes, another Miz and Ziggler feud. I can't wait. And it just came into Dolph Ziggler talking about him being screwed over, that he deserves another shot, trying to compare. Miz and Ziggler, that these guys came from the hard knocks of fucking Cleveland. Cleveland. I get it. Nah, that's not all the pay per view, but any uh, anything else about the storyline. And then Dolph Ziggler brung up his wife over them being money grubbing pussies and not trying to get more out of their career. And then a fight ensued. And that was it. That, that's kind of uh, that's kind of their way of being like, you insulted my wife, let's fight. Anything else, Ziggler didn't even have a match, yet he was in his wrestling gear. He usually wore a suit in Miss TV, or at least some fucking loafers or something. He doesn't even dress nicely, he just wears his wrestling gear and looks like a wrestling sage mode Naruto. That's way too into himself. Then the main event was a battle royale. It was a battle royale. I'm still angry, but I'm not going to shout because I'm going to leave that for maybe the SmackDown review or anything else. Because for, for, for most of the stuff, I'm not upset. I watched a good pay-per-view and I'm a bit satisfied. We had Randy Orton, Braun Strowman, Bobby Lashley, Sami Zayn, Rey Mysterio, Roman Reigns, and Seth Rollins, Baron Corbin, I think that's about it, and Cesaro, Cesaro, a few European uppercuts, Strowman got like two guys out, so Rollins, uh, Biggie, I, th I think Biggie got eliminated. Uh, eliminated only. I don't think a Biggie eliminated anybody, but he got the biggest pop in the entrance. There's the storytelling. Now that's what that's what I hate about these multi-man matches. Now they do no storytelling. Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal, no storytelling. The ten-man battle royal cross-branded. There's no storytelling while we have. The most brand exclusive pay per view that you can have SmackDown vs. Raw Superstars fight. And no storytelling. Thanks, like most of these guys feud already. Except Biggie Langston and Sami Zayn, because no one gives a shit about these fags. And now. I have to just be patient and wait for Seth Rollins. For some cockamamie reason why he should lose the summer uh, lose at SummerSlam after eliminating Randy Orton after a close call. I don't know why they were thinking Randy Orton would be the winner after what the hell happened two years ago at Summer no three years ago at SummerSlam. When he got beaten to a bloody fucking pulp. And he literally was beaten to a fucking bloody pulp and nearly fucking died on pay per view. It was cool, it looked realistic, but other than that, they didn't be like, Ray, Brock Lesnar li literally killed me, I'm having his head. No. He came to doing that, to setting Bray Wyatt's house on fire, because if he did that to Brock, he'll snap his fucking neck in front of his family. This was a bad show. They had t terrible matches. They gave Brock Lesnar the belt, and somehow, all because Heyman's part of uh, the con uh, controls Raw now, secretly. That means he can just authoritize any match he can. This was a really, uh, they had nothing going. I felt like this could have been better of a tournament. They haven't done a tournament for a world championship in a while, like a minute. I haven't seen a tournament for a world championship 
since uh, Survivor Series 2015. And that was when Seth Rollins had that tough ACL injury after a house show. And now it's 2019. I haven't seen a tournament for an important championship since. since. They haven't even gave the Intercontinental Championship a tournament. Hell, they didn't even give the new Women's Championships a tournament. They made it in the biggest and most popular match in WWE, and that's Elimination Chamber. And then belts haven't been relevant. This show gets a 4 out of 10. I mean, in, in fair shake, I mean, if you were there live in person, that must have been a great experience. But... I'm not going to watch a show when two niggas that are already on NXT are hyping every match in sight. You have the Street Profits from NXT just randomly going over every match, and then we have a, a, scre a screaming lead nigga just hop around just screaming about every match that's about to be reported. Who wants to watch that? You have no authority figure, no coherent storylines that are going to be relevant unless they're involving Shane McMahon or The Miz. Roman Rams can't tell a story. Seth Rollins just wants to wrestle. It's just a disappointment to continue watching this shit. This show gets a 4 out of 10. Hulk, Lion, and Sinker. This was really tough to watch. I, I nearly slept, went to sleep as soon as the women's match even started. I didn't know it was going to be that bad until I rewatched it, and I just saw the problem. No storytelling, no interesting set pieces. I'm literally just watching Natalia win a match and face off against Becky Lynch for nothing. Come on. It's supposed to be the hottest wrestler in a while, and she can barely tell a coherent story. This was a poor show, I gotta say. Naomi, uh, Natalia didn't even, uh, insulted her trust, her trust with Seth Rollins. She didn't even get sucked in the face, sucked in the face. They named it an All-Star Battle Royal. Even though Bayley Lynxton hasn't done much except being part of the New Day. And Sami Zayn didn't even win the singles championship or a nice or big feud since being in the WWE. Don't you dare count that Kevin Owens feud. Kevin Owens is more successful. Thank you for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. Mainly comment. I always like hearing from you people. Any comment. I'm lonely. But other than that, <laughs> thank you for watching my video. And hopefully you would like to subscribe so you can see more of this shit.